If you're gonna act like a fucking idiot, maybe deserve, expect to get treated like a fucking idiot. Maybe if you're not gonna stop and think before what you say, get what the fuck you get when you say it. What's up guys, it's your boy Evix, and welcome back to the circus. Recently, the World of Warcraft creator Pyrofire recently hotly asked a bunch of questions related to Final Fantasy XIV, and I wanted to take a look into them and answer them because these are pretty common questions and concerns that I've heard elsewhere. Largely, this is going to revolve around the controller and PlayStation 5 console players in Final Fantasy XIV, and as someone who has rated with well over 10 controller users in Savage over the many, many years that I've unfortunately, for better or worse, played this game, I'd like to think that I had a little bit of insight into this. Before I get into answering Pyrofire's questions, I literally could not find the original clips anywhere because, uh, yeah, let's not touch that topic with a 15 foot pole. Uh, I'm going to use my friend Ginger Prime's footage to do some reactionception here. Ooh, cool. <laughs> but for real, if you haven't heard of him, Ginger Prime is amazing. He has also played 14 on the controller and has controller guides out there. He does lots of different games, including New World and so many more, and is all around a badass dad that you should absolutely get to know. He's honestly fantastic. Nothing but great things to say about him. You guys are such low fucking IQ, dude. You fucking idiot. Pyro, guys, Pyro's the, Pyromance is the only smart person on the internet. We're all retards compared to fucking fuckface. Fucking have to listen to all you and all your bullshit. Fucking fuckface. Fucking. Did you not act like a fucking idiot? Maybe you deserve expect to get treated like a fucking idiot. Maybe if you're not gonna stop and think before what you say, get what the fuck you get when you say it. Even if you do, I'm telling you. You think has a console static ever like? In world first in an ultimate the so question one is has a console static ever been world first in ultimate as further questions will clarify the answer to this question is no but this question is as the kids would say problematic the larger scope of this question is in regards to the validity of third-party tools i believe and my interpretation is essentially this is an attempt to blow off console players using the straw man argument fundamentally this question is decently loaded because there is an incredibly incredibly teeny tiny fraction of a fraction of the player base that engages in ultimate content at any level and that includes even unlocking it so out of the players you'll need to have specifically raiders and out of specifically raiders you'll need to have raiders that have best in slot and can obviously confidently and capably take down the entire tier which are incredibly fewer then from those you need the ones that actually want to tackle ultimate content which the number of players able and willing to do that is incredibly small such as i was able to clearly confidently clear past savage tiers but i never cared to do an ultimate just because my real life responsibilities at the time just it just was not a priority i just didn't care to go that deep and as people would say it's not that deep bro <laughs> that's my answer <laughs> for why i didn't do it i just didn't want to i didn't have the time likewise there's a lot of people that share that sentiment they're clearing the entire savage tier but they're just like ultimate no but even from there, you can go down further because world first progression is blind, meaning that you have no guides, no tutorials, and you're really left to your own devices, which even of ultimate raiders makes up an even smaller portion of that. There's an incredibly, very, very, very big, I cannot emphasize it enough, guys, big difference between doing blind progression in an ultimate versus having really spelled out mechanics and strategies for you that you just execute. Obviously the execution's hard, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is blind versus having the strategies is a world of difference. So more than anything, the premise of this question is completely flawed because you are not less valid player for not engaging in raiding, let alone ultimate raiding, let alone obtaining world first. So this is honestly boils down to being a straw man argument, and even with that in mind, it's at face value very flimsy strongman. We really have players of all skill levels in 14, and if you pull up a statistic data analysis on 14 like Lucky Bancho, then you can see most people don't even touch savage raiding. There's nothing wrong with engaging the game that you want to play with, and engage and play 14 however you want to. That doesn't make you a less valid player if you are, say, a housing enthusiast. And I can speak from personal experience that housing gets incredibly, incredibly difficult and requires a lot of talent to execute properly. It sounds really weird to say that to say <laughs> uh, housing is difficult to anyone outside of housing or is kind of unaware of it, but that requires a lot of skill and one hell of a lot of time and dedication to pull off. Is there such thing as a console static? So question two is, is there such a thing as a console static? And I have played with many, many, many console players over the years. 
not exaggerating, it's been a lot. And oftentimes they have actually really vastly outperformed their PC player equivalents. Like we were talking about topping like uh, 80th percentile or higher parses in Savage Fights. I'm not even gonna name names in case they are worried about it being brought up, but a few of them played like Astrologian at a very high level and were clearing the Savage tier. Uh, actually two standout that did that and they were clearing it in week one or week two somewhere about there and for anyone less familiar with what astrologian is let me say to you that you will be pretty hard pressed to find a harder job to prog on uh, it's very high apm you're monitoring so many effects and procs and healing the team reviving people that die and during prog that is hard in and of itself and at the risk of doing it a disservice, but to keep the video shorter, I'll cut it short and say that playing ass in general is impressive and that these controller players uh, on the console are exceptional. And at the risk of answering further questions that are compiled, the difference between a good player and a bad player isn't really if they're on a controller or not. It and console player clear high end content all the time? No, 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 that's not what I'm asking. Do they know the fight mechanics? That's not really what I'm asking. Well practiced? I know many yes? controller players in 14 Seriously? that are absolutely yeah. decimating yeah. PC players really? with reckless abandon. Some of my uh, static members are console raider, people? No, no, no. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, like the whole static. first cleared the brand new Dragon Souls Ultimate fight on PC right now. Put that same player on a controller. With absolute respect, do you seriously think that they would suddenly be garbage at 14 on the controller? I really wonder if they would ever do that as a challenge just for fun. Now that would be interesting. Like, I, I, I'm not gonna like tweet at them and see how that goes, but I think that that would be genuinely interesting to see like how they would do on a controller. And I know that it'd be really, really, really. Cool. Console's I'm not an inferior play experience. I think you need to understand that. Practice, but um, I disagree. Is, I do think the console is, is an inferior play experience 14, based on frames per second alone. The time to learn and practice. Will dominate regardless of their game interface. I'm exceedingly confident if you put these world first raiders on PC on a controller, they would absolutely wow everyone. Is cons is it crossplay? No. Question three is is this game Final Fantasy XIV crossplay? Final Fantasy XIV has always been crossplay, and this isn't a bad thing. I find that it expands the community significantly, and citing my earlier answers, that's not a problem. Bad players are bad, even if they are somehow on <laughs> one of the 65 hertz monitor. Does anyone like actually do like a full prog on console? I'm gonna paraphrase this because there's a there's a lot there that I don't want to even address. So question four is paraphrase: Do people do full raid prog on console? And the answer is, yeah, many people do. Check out any Discord server and ask around there if there are console players accessing that data on their phone or joining Discord calls on their phone. I rated now with many people who did literally exactly that. Some of my static members are console people? No, 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 no. I mean, I mean like the whole static. Like the whole static. This is another question that I'm going to paraphrase um, that boils down to basically being, are there strictly console statics? In my opinion, this is a straw man argument because the validity of console or controller players shouldn't be based upon their ability to create a full static of controller players. But if I'm answering this generally, I'm sure that there are and there must be. Final Fantasy XIV is a very popular game, and so if you're asking, is there a group? There has to be. But this is actually really weird for even me to think about because this isn't something that people usually discuss like i haven't overtly gone on my channel and said uh three players in my last static played on console then one player in another past stack that i was in played asked on console and yes i was setting them before um and they were on controller and so on but i want to get at though the meat of the argument is more than anything you just see good raiders that care and share a common goal combined together regardless of platform whether they're controller whether they're mouse and keyboard uh interface doesn't matter it's irrelevant if they are outputting and resolving mechanics that's what matters like i said before pc or controller does not depict if a player is going to be great personal responsibility and care does console's not an inferior play experience i think you need to understand that um i disagree i do think that console is an inferior play experience yes question mark yes that's my favorite Console's line better IMO? Right. Okay. Right. Said no one fucking ever. Yes! Yes! Question six. I'm going to both paraphrase it and rework it a little bit because there's a... Uh, it's kind of more of a, a, a rant. And I, basically it boils down to is console an inferior experience? So I want to explore this a little bit and this will be a longer answer. So trimming the fat on the question, the answer really depends on what you want. There are many people that I know who enjoy sitting on a couch playing 14, and that's perfectly fine and valid. 
But beyond that, we live in the real world and most desktop computers are absolutely outdated. My own machine is seven years old. I'm a 1080 GPU currently and it is still serving me well, so I'm actually putting all of my money into a down payment for a house that I plan to buy in the coming year. If you're anywhere close to remotely aware of the housing market right now, you know <laughs> that's a lot of money, so I'm saving like crazy. Damn, I wanna move into a house with my boyfriend with a backyard, That that is my goal. But that's not even something that I think belongs on a 14 channel, so I'm gonna shut up now. But what is relevant is I can speak for myself that I'm not willing to go out and get ripped off on a GPU during this crypto land cringe fest when it actually is satisfying anything that I really need at this point. I, I, I don't feel the need to spend my money in that direction. However, getting a house, much higher priority for me. But past that, there are proper monitors, peripherals, mouse pads, and the rest. All of this is very important for a proper PC setup. In fact, you could argue that you're better off getting a higher end mouse with more sensitivity and more mouse buns on it than you would be to do like a GPU upgrade. That'll get you what, like five FPS. One example is I'm personally working on an ultra wide, nearly 40 inch monitor as my main display, which obviously has its own benefits to owning. But the point that I'm gonna try and get at is all of this costs money and all of it can break, become outdated. And for most people, they don't have tax write-offs on gaming stuff. Like someone who makes YouTube videos, someone who streams on Twitch would get. Like I've done, actually like a few weeks ago, I got my taxes done professionally uh, and uh, the amount of write-offs that I was entitled to for subscriptions to games, artwork, gaming peripherals, and all the rest added up to quite a honestly large sum. I, I was shocked. Combine that with my full-time software dev salary and the tax professional because I wasn't going to do this with a million foot pole. Uh, they found out all the tax write-offs and it was very significant. But one thing I should say is that I had to get them specially tagged, like specially filed as quote-unquote like a small business thing and like all these other details. But my point is that's not normal. <laughs> And yes, they did charge me extra for that, <laughs> sadly. So for many people, it makes more sense for them and their lifestyle and their particular wants to invest instead in a console that was recently updated and is honestly stronger than my outdated 1080 GPU, that they don't need to worry about a whole plethora of stuff related to the PC. But if you want to talk in terms of raw computing power, yeah, a custom-built $5,000 PC is going to be better. But that's pretty unreasonable, and... Uh, you could go more mid-range, obviously, just to ensure that I myself am not doing a straw man here. But that will still run you upwards of like 1.5 thousand or so to get something decently mid-range. But with GPU prices and stock, it's nasty out there. You'll be hard pressed to find anyone talking earnestly not say the GPU market is morbidly unhealthy. Kind of like the housing market. But again, this really boils down to do console players play worse because of FPS. We can look into esports for plenty of examples of extremely talented players that have ri risen to the top really from a variety of games such as League of Legends, Call of Duty, where they play on genuinely very low FPS at the start of their career, where they were doing exceedingly well. Uh, if you are bad at 60 FPS, a 165 refresh rate monitor will not help you learn the mechanics and execute a rotation properly. In short, it may be a stronger machine, but that doesn't necessarily translate into skill. But again, from my understanding in the larger context, trying to say because we don't have a world first clear on consoles which are weaker machines to diminish the validity or concerns of other console players, that's a, that's, that's not a good take, that's a kind of soggy mushy floppy take. Anyhow that's really all of the questions but they're the ones that I keep hearing and now have been asked in discord, twitter dms, I've even been asked in game over this so I really want to take the time and answer Pyrofart's questions the best that I could. Anyhow take care everyone and as always stay chill, have fun, and enjoy Final Fantasy 14 however you want to. As long as you're having fun you're doing it right <laughs> honestly.